Just when you think you've dominated the Facebook Ads Manager, they throw out a brand new design. So today we'll go through how to navigate it and also I'll give you a few tips to save you a ton of time when you're reviewing reports, making edits on your campaigns, and making some modifications to your ad account that's gonna save you time and money. Hey, it's Jaime, if we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. We're here at the Ads Manager where all of your advertising should be taking place. And to get to the screen, all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash ads manager and you get to where you need to be which is right here at the ads manager if you haven't created one it's gonna add, it's gonna prompt you to create one so you're gonna be off and running before we go anywhere else we're gonna be hitting the high notes on all the options that you have especially since this new layout was introduced but before we go there we're gonna actually go through what's in front of us right now which is where you go to create your campaigns this is where you go to launch your lead generation campaigns, messenger campaigns, traffic campaigns, conversion campaigns, everything. So from left to right, you see the account overview. Very rarely will you go there. Actually, pretty much never will you go there. And then the COVID-19 resources. So if you're having problems, issues, questions when it comes to your ads getting approved or not getting approved for any uh, sensitive information or coronavirus or whatever type of um, COVID related ads, you're going to see some more information about that right there. So campaigns, all you have to do is create a campaign. That's where you would launch it from. And you've already seen in this channel many, many videos on how to actually launch your ads. So we're not going to spend too much time there. I just want you to see how to navigate. That's where you would go to create your campaigns. And then you're going to be prompted to set up your ad sets. This is where they would show up. And then you would go to ads. Nothing very novel there. We're going to get to the we're going to get to the options here in a couple of seconds, but just know that's where you would go to create your campaigns and monitor them, turn them on, adjust the budget and do split tests and on and on. So I think at this point, if you follow this channel with any regularity, you have a good understanding of how to how that gets done. Now, if you want to adjust these right here, the reporting uh, numbers or metrics, all you have to do is click different reports or click different columns that'll populate so you can select the ones that they've already pre-built so almost like pre-built reports or you can customize your own columns and create your own that way you look at the metrics that you actually want to measure so that is something that is very very cool that you can check out at your leisure all right so let's go into the new layout it is just like i mentioned new so it's tripping some people up especially when you look at this it looks like there is limited options well what people forget is that you can actually scroll down it got me for the longest time i did not know that all i had to do was scroll down and all of the items that i was looking for were right there so don't let that deceive you all you have to do is scroll down and you're on your way so we're going to hit the major ones the important ones that you need to be aware of because you're going to be making some changes to your ads based off of what um what um what options you have in front of you so you have the shortcuts the ads manager that's where we're at presently so it's going to bring us right back the business settings i will need to blur out the um the business settings because it's going to show all of the other accounts that are associated to this particular ad account but you're going to go to your business settings where you can adjust um, billing information you can adjust uh, your contact information you can adjust the uh, pages that you're associated with, the ad accounts that you're associated with, it has a lot of information. So once you go through and actually create your business manager, which again, I highly encourage that you do as well, you're gonna have all that information and that's where you would change it. So that's the business settings and billing. Very important as well. You're gonna have all of your billing charges. This particular ad account does not have any because I'm running my ads through a different account but you have the historic um the historical uh, charges so if there's ever a billing dispute or if there's ever a question about how much you're actually spending per month this is where you would go to see what's going on and also adjust your payment settings so especially when you get started you're gonna have a limited budget to work with if you just created your ad campaign chances are that you're gonna get notified every five dollars that your ads um, generate so cost that that your ads generate 
So you're going to get those notifications, those every single five uh, dollars. You're going to get an email notifying you that your credit card has been charged. This is where you would go to change that. You just go to your payment settings and adjust the notification. That can get very annoying. So if you know about that problem, then uh, then know that's where you would go to fix it. All right. And then the events manager. The events manager, this is where you would go to create your custom audiences. This is where you would go to create your Facebook pixel. This is where you go to create uh, look like audiences, assuming that you're not running ads in the special ad category. This is where a lot of the information goes down. If you have any offline events or any app events, this is also where you would control it. But for the most part, understand that this has to do with your Facebook pixel and also with creating custom conversions, partner integration. So you have that available right there but mostly think about it as your pixel images and videos this is what used to be called your online assets so again i do have to blur this out because there's other accounts associated to this but this is where you would go to see all of the images the photos well the same thing so all of the images all of the videos that you have uploaded onto your account and some questions come up in why would i upload my images or videos at this level well you're able to get those images and those videos from here regardless of the campaign that way you don't have to upload it individually to each campaign and then work from there all right so let's go to store locations if you have multiple locations then this is going to mean more to you so i'll wait for it to um i don't have any uploaded so it's not um it's not going to really even show anything but if you have multiple store locations you can advertise um, with different locations it's, and it comes especially handy whenever you are advertising from a geography base so meaning if you have a location in the north side of town south side of town then you can advertise based off of those individual locations and the unique settings that each one of them have which is store hours the products that you offer and all that fun stuff the ad account settings that is very similar to the business settings that you saw, but in the ad account settings, you're going to see what you're seeing at the moment, which is um, your business information, currency, um, if you're an agency, if you're not an agency, all that fun stuff. And also the pages that your ad account is associated to, the payment settings, the notifications, going back to the when you get notified and when you don't get notified and all that fun stuff. All right. So we're going to continue going. I think I got lost. Let's go to audiences. I'm kind of going all over the place, so my apologies. When it comes to the audiences, this is a personal ad account. So that's why it doesn't have give me the ability to create a customer list. You have to have a business manager in order to create a customer list. So let me X out of that. But you're able to create your custom audiences, your lookalike -like audiences from here as well. So remember, we were able to do that through the... Through the events manager but here at the audience level we have the ability to create it right from there that's where you would go to upload your your customer list that's where you would go to retarget your facebook uh, not to retarget but to create your audiences for your facebook page your forms your videos your websites um, audiences that's where you would go to create those all right so Okay, I kind of went all over the place. Let's see, where can we go to jump back on the track? Events Manager, we've done that. The ad accounts, we've done that. Audiences, we've come that. With the account quality, it's not going to necessarily give you how good or how bad it is. It's just going to give you a dashboard to see which, um, if you were in trouble and had a, vi a violation of your, the Facebook advertising policies and and you submitted an appeal, then it would show that right there in review, reversed, and changed. So if your accounts have gotten into Facebook trouble, then you would come back here as a dashboard to see what's going on in the status. It doesn't necessarily say, hey, you are an A plus advertiser or a C minus advertiser in Facebook size. It's not that, it's just more of a dashboard. So understand that uh, the name could be a little bit misleading. Billing, that's where we would go to adjust your billing. So that's something that you saw in the shortcuts. Brand safety. This is something that is very similar to Google Ads. If you run any Google Ads in the past, then you know that you have the ability to control where you advertise, not only from the filter standpoint, but also where your ads show up 
because it could show up to some very sensitive um, information, not information, sensitive content. So Facebook has taken a page off of that, uh, off of Google ads. And here you have the ability to control your inventory. So if you go to inventory and you don't mind your ads being shown in, let's just say some content that Facebook deems as a bit offensive or a bit um, more sensitive in nature, then you can select full inventory right there. But standard is just fine. Um, you can also limit it if you're very pr uh, preserved, if you're very um, guarded with your brand and don't want to take any risk on your ads showing in front of certain uh, pages that you may not find um, be in agreement with, then you can limit your inventory there as well. So again, it's taken a page from Google ads and works very much the same way when it comes to the brand safety. Business settings, we've already gone through that. The events manager, we've already gone through that up there. Images and videos, I um, I kind of jumped to, to this part a few seconds ago or minutes ago, so we're not gonna go into that. Same thing there. The ads manager, we were already at the ads manager, but I'll show you again because this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. This is where you're gonna launch your campaigns. All right, now the audiences, we've already gone through that in the shortcut, so you know what that's about. Automated rules make sense if you're spending a lot of money and spending um, your time in different accounts. So if you're managing several different ad accounts for people, businesses, or yourself, then creating some automated rules will actually help you out in the long run. So you can create a rule to where your ads become inactive as soon as a certain threshold is met. So let's just say cost per result is greater than $5. If you know that your ads should not be costing more, if you know your leads or your sales should not be costing more than $5 per result, then you can put this right here and you know that all of your ad accounts or the accounts that you select will be shut down as soon as they meet that rule. So it's a good way to automate it. But again, it makes more sense if you're spending a lot of money and are spread across different campaigns. That way you you're able to have essentially a virtual assistant via Facebook to help you out and not have to do that manually. The creative hub, you're able to design ads from here so you know so it, you know what it actually looks like. So you can create a mock-up right here, any type of campaign or any type of ad, you're able to recreate it from here. So you see, will this campaign even, what will it look like? Will it work? And this also gives you some formats and it's going to give you some examples of some companies that are running certain type of ads that have performed well. So Facebook has all of that data and gives you inspiration. That's what the whole get inspired means. It's going to give you examples of what other companies are using right now to advertise. All right. Let's go down. So ads reporting, ads reporting, I don't use this all that much um, unless I'm really going in and digging into some certain aspects of who is my ideal customer, who's reacting to my adver advertisements and all that fun stuff. But mostly I just go to the ads manager and adjust the columns to see how they're going. But you're able to cross-reference the demographics. You're able to cross-reference who, um, who is reacting to my ads, who's giving me their contact information, what's the average age and all that fun stuff even if you're running ads in the special ad category. So this gives you a good insight on the back end of even though you can't target them specifically, you are receiving the information of who has reacted to you. So you're able to make decisions, marketing decisions later on. With audience insights, you're able to do your research ahead of time. Now with reports, we just covered reports. With reports, you're able to see what happened with the ads that you ran. Now that means that you actually have to run some ads. That means that you actually have to spend some money. But with audience insights, you're able to do the research beforehand. So you get some information about Facebook. So right off the bat, you just see Facebook users. This doesn't, in and of itself, doesn't tell us too much outside of it being a fun fact that 55% of Facebook users are women, 45 are men. So let's just go to interest. Let's just say real estate as an interest right there. All right, so 60% of women are interested in this real estate interest, 40% are men. That's interesting to know. Going to page likes, you get to see 
other associated um, interests, like, let's just see, right here, affinity. How likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everyone on this, on Facebook. So you say, Ula Lama, I don't know what that is, Book VIP, The Mint, uh, Home Goods, Big Lot. So if they have this real estate interest, you see their affinity to other pages that they would most likely like. And then you see a breakdown right here. You see it broken down based off of location, activity, and all that fun stuff. So you're able to play around with this. I'm not going to go too much into it because that is an entire video in and of itself. But just know that Audience Insights provides you additional information that Facebook readily gives you, um, gives a, a way to you. So you're able to do your in own research from that standpoint. Now, let's see. Let's refresh real quick. It seems to be struggling, so let's go back. Experiments. This is a newer tab. I have not used it all that much outside of the A-B split testing. You see the holdout test, which I find pretty useless. Brand survey, pull your audience to measure the impact of your Facebook ads on your brand. So I don't use this all that much outside of A-B split testing, but just know that this is a newer feature that Facebook has made available if you're into doing experiments from that point. And then page posts, that is going to your page and seeing how well they have performed, their reach, their engagement, the date that you published, and all that fun stuff along with your schedule post and ads. So basically, this is what you have on the publishing side over on your Facebook business page. And then the last two we're actually not gonna cover, but just know that if you sell some physical products or have um, some services that you do sell from the Facebook platform. This is where you would go to control it. This is very important if you have uh, e-commerce, if you have really anything of product-based, again, it, it can be a service as well, but there you can categorize them and sell them. And that's actually a big component of dynamic ads. I know we don't cover that too much in this, these ads that you see on these videos, but that is where you would go to set those up. Well, now that we know how to navigate the ads manager, you might be interested in knowing how to actually launch campaigns that produce results. So I'll leave a video right here that's going to help you do just that. Also, if you found value today, please be sure to subscribe. It really does help me out. And of course, make it your best day yet.